Hi, Dr. Shook here. Hope you guys are doing well today. What I want to share with you guys today is the number one cause of knee pain and what we do about it. We, we do take a unique approach to working with knees. It is something that's complementary to what you may have done and it's something that I recommend everyone consider before having more invasive procedures like cortisone injections, you know, the Synvisc injections, knee replacements, or even doing stem cell therapy. This is a, a different approach that I want to share with you guys. So the number one cause of knee pain is arthritis, and in particular osteoarthritis, which is the wear and tear type of arthritis that breaks down the cartilage of the knee. Now this picture, what it represents here is the black is the upper part of your, your thigh. This is the femur. This lower part is called the tibia. It's the lower bone, and where they join here, all this pink stuff that's in there is the cartilage. It's your meniscus. It's the it's the, the cartilage that covers the uh, the upper and lower bones where they join together. The the red represents the muscles that are on top of you know above the bone that attach and help to keep the the knee stabilized. And the way that they work and help with knee stability is through the nerves controlling their, their tension and tone, okay? Now you do have ligaments that also support this that we have to keep into uh, consideration here, but they're really part of this cartilage. I could, I could include them as um, cartilage and ligaments here. Now, the thing is, is that this joint tends to degrade. The, the meniscus, the cushion here over time can break down. But here's the thing. You know, people will say, well, you're just getting old or it's just wear and tear. Well, well here's the thing. You know, if, if it was age, then every single person that was your age that has knee pain would have that same knee pain. It's not age. What it is is there are some unique factors to you that have contributed to the breakdown of this knee. Now, it could have been an injury. It could be some kind of inflammatory process going on. It could be that you have actually uh, compression and issues with the nerves in your back that's decreasing the ability of your, your body to control and stabilize the knee. I mean, there's a lot of different things at the ankle. You can have stressors here too that affect this. So we have to look at this from you know, all of these different perspectives to give us a better idea of what to do to prevent this from getting worse or, or from you having to have more invasive procedures. So we want to look at all these different aspects of what, is, you know, what goes into you know, optimal knee health and then what can go wrong. So what we do that's different is number one, this cartilage, so a lot of times when you're in a therapeutic program, let's, let's say you do some sort of physical therapy, one of the things that they're going to have you do is just ride an exercise bike. And you know, that's, it's a non-weight bearing type of exercise that gets some movement and can help to strengthen some of the muscles but also move fluid through this cartilage. The interesting thing is that this cartilage of the knee is very, you know, it gets all of its nutrition, almost all of the nutrition from diffusion of fluid. So it doesn't have a direct blood supply. It has to rely on the fluid that circulates by movement to move through and help to nourish it and, and heal it. So, you know, they, they want you to do this repetitive kind of cycling, which is not bad, but what we found that works is we use a, a special procedure called number one here. pulsed decompression of the knee. Now this is non-surgical. It's, it's non-surgical and what we do is we use a special uh, computer uh, driven table and, it, and it, what it does is it gently tractions and pulls and creates separation here of the bones. So imagine that the bones here are together. What we do is we have you, this is completely passive, it's non-weight bearing. You're laying down and it's very comfortable and gentle and it gently pulls and, and creates some separation and then gives back. Now it's very gentle, it feels good, and what, what it does is it helps to improve the diffusion of fluids through the knee, through this cartilage, so that we can get more nutrition and nutrients to that cartilage so that it will have the best opportunity to heal. That's the first thing that we do. The second thing that we do is we consider, we consider using laser therapy. Now, this is the type of laser therapy that's not thermal, meaning it does not heat, it does not burn, it is very comfortable. You won't even feel it when it's working, but you can, you can see it. What we do is we place lasers directly in the joint line, so right where the bones come together. As we're doing that pulsed, that pulsed um, decompression, creating some separation, we place our, our super pulsed lasers. These are very uh, powerful lasers that we place very close to the skin, and they use red light, so you can see a visible red light. They also use infrared. This has been shown to uh, decrease inflammation, to um, increase and stimulate the ability of the cells 
of your body to produce more energy. Basically, it, this is we're looking at helping here with um, with healing of the cartilage, improvement in healing of the cartilage. And then the third thing is that it increases circulation. So decreases inflammation, uh, improves the energy metabolism of the cells. So we can we could see improvements in healing, and then improves circulation. This is really an important uh, and and a, a very valuable piece of this treatment approach that we take is using these things in combination. If we were just to place the laser on your knee without doing any type of, of, um, of uh, decompression, of the pulsed decompression, then we wouldn't get the same penetration into the tissues. Okay, that's, that's a really important point. Now, beyond that, what we wanna look at is remember I'd mentioned, uh, I mentioned to you that this is something we, ha we have to look at also, can your body heal? Are, or do you have adequate nutrition? I mean, are, do you have the basic biochemistry needed for your body to heal? And that's a, that's a really big issue. A lot of people have very poor, they have a lot of deficiencies in nutrients, they're eating diets that are very inflammatory, and they are, it is not, that is not ideal for healing. So that is something that we have to take into consideration because no matter what you're doing, if you're going on and doing more invasive procedures like a knee replacement, or cortisone injections, anything else that you're trying to do, stem cells, your body's not going to heal if your biochemistry is not ideal. Okay, so it's really important for us to, to address and consider that. Now, so what we do, the third thing that we do that's, that's different is we consider metabolic therapy. metabolic therapy. Now metabolic therapy is looking at your blood chemistry. We don't necessarily have to do blood testing, but I like to do it. The more data that we can gather on what you need as an individual, the better opportunity we're going to have to improve that knee. Now there's a, there's a few benefits that, that come into play here. So number one, a lot of people that have degenerative knees have a big problem, okay? They're obese. Right, so they have they're they're very heavy. If you if you're overweight, if you're obese, you're getting a tremendous amount of force and pressure placed on this cartilage. It's going to accelerate degeneration. So our metabolic therapy not only looks at the inflammatory state and whether or not you have ideal chemistry to heal, but it also helps with weight loss. Weight loss. Now we utilize a lot of different dietary approaches to help achieve these goals here but it depends on the individual person. But one of the most important things that we help people do is to, to achieve a more ideal body weight. And if we can do that, and, there's, and there are a lot of reasons that people are overweight. That it can be hormonal problems, it can be deficiencies, it can be issues with even chemicals in our environment. It can be plastics that you're ingesting that mimic estrogens, that decrease your sensitivity to your insulin, and that promote obesity. There are actually environmental chemicals, industrial and agricultural chemicals now that have been called obesogens, meaning they promote obesity. That's well documented in the scientific literature. There are also chemicals that are called diabetogens that are now found you know, well known within the scientific literature. So this is something that's very uh, important to consider here. And if we can take weight you know, off of your knee, it, we, it will help it tremendously. So weight loss is one of our goals. Another thing is uh, to improve healing. Okay, so we want to lose weight if, if, that's, if that's something that needs to be done. We want to take weight off of the knee or we want to optimize your body weight. Let's say you don't have good, you're not an ideal weight, you're really underweight. Well, then you might need um, better, uh, uh, you, you might need more muscle mass, better, uh, better, uh, mus uh, better mu muscle mass to help um, with just overall health. I mean, you might have poor absorption and that can interfere with healing. So we want to improve healing as much as we can. And, you know, establishing you know, if your body is not able to carry out normal biochemistry, I mean, if you have deficiencies, if you're not absorbing well, if you're not absorbing the nutrients that you're consuming, it's going to be a problem for you to heal no matter what you do. So this is really important and, and tremendously um, neglected. The, the last thing that metabolic therapy can really benefit and, and has been shown to help is, um, is that it decreases decrease pain. Okay, so here's the thing, if we can lower and decrease your inflammatory load, the, inf the inflammation that you're dealing with, then you're going to have less pain because inflammation stimulates the nerve endings and fires pain nerves. It makes, it makes your nerves more susceptible and more sensitive. So if we can do these things, if we, can, if we approach the knee from this perspective, rather than just saying, hey, ride an exercise bike for a while, 
Let's see if that helps. Well, that doesn't help, well, then let's give you injections. You've got to ask a few questions. You know, the arthritis, there's, there's some other videos I've done where I talk more about what, what can break down here, but it's, it's a lot more than just the knee's arthritic, let's, you know, let's exercise more. There's a lot more to it. Why is the knee degenerating? Why is it breaking down? And, you know, metabolically, we see a lot of problems there. We see uh, orthopedic problems. We see neurological problems where there's not good neurological control. And in any event, you know, we are going to take a very unique approach. So we're going to use pulse decompression, laser, and metabolic therapy. Now we do use some therapies to uh, support nerve health if needed. We do consider, we look, look at you neurologically, we check to see if, you're, if you have um, good or ideal neurological control of these muscles of the leg because they help to stabilize the knee. Really important factors. So I hope this helps you to better understand the number one cause of knee pain that we see, which is arthritis or osteoarthritis, what we do about it. Okay? So if you guys have any questions, if you're dealing with knee pain, you need some help, you'd just like an opinion, I'll be happy to give you uh, a straightforward opinion on what's going on, whether or not I think I can help you. I cannot help everyone. If you are bone on bone, and, and I want to let you know, if you're bone on bone, just and, and it's very obvious, I, I'm not going to be able to help you with it. You probably do need a knee replacement. However, I have seen people that have been told they're bone on bone. We take x-rays in our office, digital x-rays here, uh, or they bring in x-rays and they're not bone on bone. But the doctor, you know, sometimes I think that that, 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 that is used, uh, someone has told they're bone on bone, when the options have been exhausted of the doctor that's trying to help you. So you're not getting better. There may be loss of, arth uh, of joint, uh, joint space, but it's not completely bone on bone. And uh, I've seen that said, not, now it's not always that they tell you you're bone on bone and you're not completely, but there is, you know, even for people that are to that point, you know, we've seen improvements with taking this type of approach. It just takes a little bit of time. The worse it is, the more time it's going to take. So anyway, I hope this helps you guys to better understand some of the options that you have out there for dealing with knee pain. If you'd like an opinion on your case, all you can do, uh, all you need to do is go to hickoryspine.com. You can click on our knee, on our, uh, knee pain treatment. Uh, page and you can learn more. You can also go to um, just call us on the phone at 828-324-0800 and my staff will be glad to help you out and uh, give you more information. But I appreciate you guys. Hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Talk to you again soon.